Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Candace. Congrats on making it through this course. Now that you've made it this far, we're here to give you a sneak peek into what an interview on the technical subjects covered by this course might look like. We hope this will help you have a better idea what to expect in your next interview. Just remember to keep learning and keep practicing. All right, so for this scenario, let's say that you stop by to see a user at their desk and uh, they reported some kind of application issue. Um, when you get there, they show you the problem. They're trying to launch an application from a shortcut on their desktop, and every time they double click on it, they get this generic error message. And it says there was an error launching the application. Start troubleshooting that for me. What OS are you using, and what's the name of the application? Say it's Linux desktop, um, and it's a custom application. We'll say that you know I built it in house. Uh, let's call it Application X. Okay. Do you remember the last time this worked? Sure. Um, we can say it worked on Friday, and today's Monday. Okay. Do you know if there's any other users that's having this issue? So this is the first report of it, but it's still early on a Monday. Okay. Um, are you aware if there is any type of updates that happened over the weekend? Not that I'm aware, but is there any way we can check? So we can check the apt log. And what is, what is apt? Apt is pretty much a utility that we use to install applications and updates. Okay, cool. Um, so where would we, you know, can you walk me through where we can find the logs for app? Hmm. I'm actually not sure where the logs for the application would be at. Okay. And how might you find it out if this was a, a real world scenario? We can probably check the man page or search online. Oh, okay, great. That's a good idea. So let's say that you're able to find out that the log is in slash var slash log slash app. Uh, and the file that we're looking for is history.log. Now that you've got that file, we've got you know, 100 different entries in here. How do we find what we're looking for specifically just for this application? We can use the grep command with the application name. OK. Um, let's say that we do that. We find that there was an update done just over this past weekend. So it's actually possible that the update could have caused this issue. Um, there could be a missing dependency, or the application could have got corrupted. So we can also check permissions, too. So where do we start? So I want you to run a few updates just to make sure everything's installed and there's no missing dependencies. So first, I want you to run sudo apt git update and then sudo apt git upgrade. OK, great. So let's say that we those both run. They complete successfully. What do we do now? So let's try and launch the application. So it still fails. Same exact error. So I think now we should probably check the permissions. All right. And how do we do that? So first, we want to get the location. So we can probably get the location by right-clicking on the shortcut and then seeing what the command section says. OK, so we do that. And let's say it says application-x as the command. So now you want to use the which command with the location that I provided. OK, and we'll say it's located in slash usr slash bin. So now we want to navigate with cd to the directory of that application. OK, and say we're there. OK, so now we want to list out all the permissions, so you want to do ls space hyphen l. OK, so here's what I see. Dash rwx, r dash x, dash dash dash. Uh, then it says root space root. Can you explain to me what this all means? R stands for read, w stands for write, x stands for execute. The first set of three is associated with the owners of the application. The second set of three is associated with the groups of the application. And then the last set of three is associated for other or users. Um, root is associated with the owner. And then the second root is associated with the group. OK, so after looking at all that, does anything stand out as wrong here? Yes. So since the last set of three is associated with users and other, um, I'm noticing that there's no read or execute permissions for this application. OK, and how do we correct that? So we can use a change modify command, chmod, to update the permissions. So, OK, so now it's fixed for me. We, we try the application. Everything works. Any follow-up that we need to do? Yes, I would want to notify the owners of the application because this could affect a lot of users. And this will also help prevent reoccurring issues from happening. OK, good. Thank you. In this scenario, we saw a lot of back and forth, which is very common for troubleshooting interviews. The initial description was very broad, and the candidate used several follow-up questions to better scope the problem. Since the error message wasn't clear, there were several possible causes of the problem. Eliminating the most likely culprits first allowed us to keep trying until we found the actual cause. We also showed that it's OK if you don't know everything. 
The candidate didn't know where the log for APTA stored, but she explained how she would find that out if this were a real life issue she were trying to address. When you do that, it shows that you're resourceful and a good problem solver. It's impossible to know everything, but knowing where to find answers is a critical skill for an IT support specialist. That's it for now. See you again at the end of our next course. Congratulations on finishing this lesson from the Google IT Support Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and get the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next lesson in the course by clicking here. And subscribe to our channel for more lessons from upcoming Google Career Certificates.